In the previous lectures, we saw how to define data members as private. Now in this lecture, we will learn how to define member functions as private. This means this lecture is about private member functions. So in this lecture, we will properly understand what are private member functions and we will learn how to define them within the class. So without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. There is only one topic and the name of the topic is private member functions. So let's understand private member functions properly. Private member functions are functions inside a class marked with private specifier. First of all, we are talking about member functions. This means functions that are provided within the class. And they are private. This means they are marked with private access specifier. This means they are only accessible within the class. Also, they are quite useful when we don't want some functions to be accessible to users. If we want some member functions to be not accessible to the outside world, that is, from outside the class, then we can make those member functions private. Now, here is the example program to understand the usefulness of private member functions. Here I have defined the calculator class. Here we can observe in this class we have private and public members. We have this private member function square. This is the member function because this function is defined within this class. Also, it is defined under the private label. Therefore, we can say that this is the private member function. So, square is the private member function. It has the return type as int and it can accept an integer parameter. Within braces, I have written this code, return x times x. So, this function will return the result of x times x. That is, it has the capability to return the square of some x. We can call this function within this class, but we cannot call this function outside the class. Even if we create the object of this class and try to call this function, then we would not be able to do this. So this is the private member function. Now let's move to this public member function. Here we have this show square function. This is the public member function. It has the return type as void and it has the parameter x of type integer. As the name suggests, it has the capability to display the square of x with the help of this stdcout statement, that too in a specific format. Now here you can observe that the square function has been called. We can call this function because this function is accessible within this class. We can call this directly from this class. Now here is the square function call and to this function x has been passed, which is the parameter x of this specific function. I hope this is clear to you. Now the outside world can call the show square function, but it cannot call the square function. Here is the main function. You can think of this as the outside world. I'm calling the outside world something that is outside the class. So this main function is the outside world. Here we have the object calc of calculator type, that is the class is calculator. And through this object, I'm calling the square function. But we cannot do this as already suggested. Therefore, we will get error from the compiler. But we can call the show square function and we can pass this value 5 to it. We will get the output square of 5 is 25, which is correct. This function is calling the square function and through this function, we are receiving the square of 5, which is 25. And we are seeing this output in a specific format. Square of 5 is 25. So in this way, the private member function can be defined. 
And from this program, the usefulness of the private member function is also clear. Here we are restricting the call to the square function. We are not allowing the direct access to the square function by the outside world. We are only allowing the show square function to be called from the outside world. This function allows us to display the square of a specific number in a specific format. And this is the only thing we are allowing. We do not allow the call to the square function and we are not allowing the square function to be called and manipulated from the outside world. So in this way, we are providing the restrictive access to the square function. This function can only be called indirectly from this function. I hope this is clear to you. So this shows the usefulness of the private member functions. So with this, we have understood private member functions properly. Now we know how to define private member functions. This means we are done with this topic and we are done with this lecture. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.